Dave Berba wide awake though, snares Got a line it. drive, and uh, it hurt him, hurt the hand, but Berba would remain in the game. Top six, Reds up one zip. David Segui against Berba, and Segui, his eighth home of the year, two-run shot, Expos now up 2-1. Berba says, you know, I, I'm not happy. Does he have issues? He's got significant issues. <laughs> Reds had several opportunities, bottom six, two out, bases loaded. Anthony Telford coming in to pitch to Brett Boone. And Boone swings and misses it. Strike three to end the inning. Bottom eight. Expos up 4-2, two, two out. Base is loaded. Hal Moore is the batter. Hits the easy ground out of Mike Lansing. And that ends that inning. Bottom eight. Two out. Base is loaded. Curtis Goodwin. Down he goes. Expos win it 5-2. Bollinger beats the Reds for the second time this season. Urbina gets his 16th save and 19 opportunities. Tom Glavin, and he comes through, helping his cause. A base hit to left, that scores two, and Atlanta had the lead at this point by the score of two nothing. Kenny Lofton out on the DL, bad groin. Former teammate in Cleveland, Carlos Baerga, a little conversation. Lofton says, you guys tonight, well, hold on. He's just in the top of the fifth, three nothing Braves, Todd Pratt. And this unfortunately hit someone in the crowd, unlucky fan nailed in the face and was actually taken out. When you have a lot of moisture on your gloves, the bat does slip out of your hands. Tonight he did that three times. Right on the fifth, Andrew Jones up, Chipper Jones on first, and Harold, we have a developing situation. Definitely so. Again, a nice relay, and it completes the throw. It looks like it's gonna be on the money. He beats the slide. Now the umpire is blocked off from what we actually see. It looks like Chipper doesn't get in, but what can you say, I'd have made the same call. Bottom six, tied at five. Michael Tucker bounces out to first over the head of John Olerud, and what happened here? Well, the pitcher was covering first base because it was going to be a routine ground ball. Once it bounced over, he just turned the wrong way and got in the way of Tucker. Made him pay for it. Interference was called. Tucker was awarded second, bottom of the seventh. Fred McGriff, just his 11th homer of the year, 6-5 Atlanta. Top eight, Todd Pratt. The Adventures of Todd Pratt. My heavens. Well, every one of those balls was away, and he was trying to pull it, and that's why he ended up slinging the bat that direction. Top of the 8-6-5 Atlanta, Mally, Manny Alexander, the hero last night, comes through again. Base hit to right, Bernard Gilkey comes in to score. We're all tied at six, and then in the same inning, still the top of the eighth, the pinch hitter Matt Franco doubles to the gap in left center, scoring Pratt and Alexander. The Mets go up 8-6. They go on to beat the Braves again. The final score was 9-7. Last night, the Mets overcame a 5-1 deficit in the late innings. In this one, they also overcome a 5-1 deficit. The weekend, bottom of the second, no score. Mike Flowers grounds one to Domingo Cedeno. Nice play to get the out at second. Pudge Rodriguez, though, sprained his right ankle, backing up first. He left the game with a mild sprain. X-rays negative. Bottom of the sixth, Mariners up 6-3. Jose Cruz, Jr., the drive to left field off Darren Oliver, his 10th of the year. Mariners go up 7-3. It's still 7-3 in the ninth, but it's the Mariner bullpen in charge. Scary. Domingo Cedeno, the base hit to right. Dean Palmer scores off Charlton. Rangers trail 7-4. Bobby Ayala then comes in to replace Charlton. Loads the bases, then walks Mark McLemore to force in a run. Rangers trail 7-5. With one out and the bases loaded, Rusty Greer's base hit to right scores Cedeno. Damon Buford then slides it ahead of Jay Buner's throw, and it's tied at 7. Bottom of the ninth. Pinch runner Rich Amaral at second. Russ Davis, the slow grounder up the middle off Cedeno's glove. Amaral comes around third and scores the winning run. The Mariners do it again to the Rangers. 8-7, the sixth straight time the Mariners have won in this series. Ayala gets the win despite allowing both of the A's. Seven in a row for Anaheim. Mark McGuire looking to improve on last night's 0 for 3, three strikeout performance. Didn't much matter. Bottom of the fifth, Jim Edmonds goes with the pitch to left center. The slow solo shot off Carlos Tim Reyes Salmon. is his 16th. Then Tim Salmon hits a solo shot off Reyes. He went three for five. It was his 16th. Nine to one Angels. And six batters later with two on. Tony, Tony Phillips hits a three-run homer. He also had a triple. The Angels getting three homers in the fifth to go up 12-1. All-star Jason Dixon sharp. Freezing McGuire with the curve. McGuire 0 for three again with one strikeout. 14 to four. The final in this one. Angels have now won the first eight. He is sure that he has popped out. John Flaherty is not quite as sure. Castilla will get new life. Padres would pay. Next pitch. Ken Caminetti, Gold Glover. Don't see that much. The bases are juiced for Kurt Mann wearing it on the first pitch. He lines a single to right. Dante Bichette and Larry Walker would score. The throw coming in. 
to third to get a little wild. Castillo would score, and the Rockies grab a 3-1 lead. Top of the eighth. Colorado now up 5-1. And Tony Gwynn leading off. Got it. Right on the money, right on the sweet spot. It's a home run, his 14th of the season, tying a career high. Rockies up 5-2. Top of the ninth, now the Padres load the bases against Kurt Lescana. Kilvio Veras at the plate. And Kilvio's going to ground into the 4-6-3 double play, but John Flaherty scores to cut the Rock lead to 5-3. So with two outs, it's up to Tony Gwynn. He is a lumberjack, and he's okay. Number 15 on the year for Gwynn. That's a career high. He's got 74 RBIs, his career high, and that is 90. Padres tied up at five, send the game to extras. Bottom of the 11th, two on, one out for the Rockies. Bruce Bochy discussing with Davey Lopes and walk Larry Walker to get to the big camp. Oops. We're falling behind 2-0. The walker is when he intentionally walked in, and then the big cat comes up, and he worked the count to 3-2, and then started wasting pitches right and left. He wasted three 3-2 three pitches, and on the fourth one, the walks as good as a hit. As it ends the game, Harvey Pulliam scores the winning run. Trevor Hoffman is not happy. He is not happy with the water bucket. And what is he going to do with that bat? He reached for a bat, but we don't have time to show that to you. Rock high foul ball to right. Raul Mondesi has got a bead. And no oh, needs a glove. Not Fan quite. grabs a souvenir. No interference was called. Bottom five. L.A. up three nothing. Giants hadn't scored in the series at this point. And Todd Zeal, zealous. Off Julian Tavares, 17th homer. He's got 46 RBIs, and the Dodgers had a six zip lead. Top of the eighth. The Giants had scored. They trail six one. Mark Lewis, hot shot. Oh, you just can't teach this. Greg Gagne, heads up, and they get Mark Lewis. Great play to get Lewis. This is just your old routine. Five, six, and three put out, and Los Angeles wins it. Six, two. Nomo, by the way, goes eight, struck out seven again, and walked two. The Dodger eight game winner is their longest since reeling off 11 straight and made. Harabu trying to give advice to Mariano Duncan. Damon Easley goes piggyback on Joe Girardi. Bottom of the third, here's Tino Martinez. He's 30th home run of the season. It's way back to right. George Steinbrenner says, I'm really glad we got him last year. Tower of the fifth runners on the first and second. Pettit facing Easley. Easley hits one down the line. Fair or foul? Well, it's foul. Easley says, I wish it would have been fair. Just get another chance because it was foul. Down he goes. Robo knows a thing or two about uh, striking out batters, at least he did last night. Well, obviously, Al Clark got that call right because nobody complained on the home run anyway. Matt Walbeck rounds with a double play. Steinbrenner can take, uh, yeah. I think, is he moving to the <laughs> he is he like, he, I think he likes our music. Yanks win at three zip, seven shutout innings for Pettit, which means he hasn't given up a run in 22 innings. Yanks beat Detroit for the night against B.J. Surhoff. Foul the first, the first pitch of the inning for Jimmy Key. Well, you're going to protect your, your, your hitters, and he comes back and retaliates real quick. You're not, you're not going to be knocking down my hitters without me protecting. That's what's great about Jimmy Key. Here in the third, Lenny Webster throws down a third. Bernitz, it hit him, and then he came in to score, and the Brewers are up two zip. McDonald against Webster, Brewers up two zip. Webster hits it sharply to Dave Nelson, dives and tosses to McDonald for the out. McDonald a no-no after three. Bottom four, Brewers up three zip. Rafael Palmero, down he goes. McDonald, a no hitter after four. Is there Bottom a situation brewing? Developing. Jeffrey Hammonds hits a tough hopper to Sorello. He throws Hammonds out. McDonald, no hitter through six. But after he finished the sixth, did not come back into the game, left the game with a stiff right shoulder. So Mike Fetters comes in, and Palmero breaks up the no hitter with one out in the seventh. But there's now two men on. And two batters later, it's Surhoff who's the batter. And he will ground to Jose Valentin. Up the middle, he makes a nice play to get Sir Hawk. Top of the ninth, one out. Mark Loretta grounds the ball up the middle. Roberto Alomar backhands it, jumps. Oh, my goodness, what a play. Bottom line, two outs, Doug Jones facing Cal Ripken. Robbie, you're awesome. And here, Ripken goes down as the Brewers win it 3-1. McDonald wins back-to-back -back starts for the first time all year as he beats his former team. It's Carlos Garcia on basically the same pitch. Garcia, though, didn't like it. Avery, seven and a third, his longest outing of the year. But Dan Vaughn Escherman against Carlos Delgado. Runner on second. Loop single to left. 
Orlando Merced scores, cuts the lead to 4 3. Now runners on first and second. John Wazen in to face Sean Green. Oh! Green went the other way off the wall. Two runners come in to score. Toronto goes up 5 4. It's still 5 4. Top of the ninth, two runners on, and Delgado. Rips one down the line as the Boston bullpen collapses. Toronto gives up. Uh, goes on to win 8 to 4 is your final. Hintkin, his lead. Got it up in the zone, and Scott rolling, was rolling. Three run home run. Made it 5 0 Phillies, and they go on to win 13 to 3. Rowland goes 3 for 4, drives in 5. Phil snapping a 13 game road losing streak. Phillies set a season high with 13 runs and tie a season high with 15 hits. Down the line and in. Right, Damon chases. Oh, what a catch. Well, what makes it a great catch? You saw him look down. He knows exactly where he's at. Comes back, picks the ball up, and makes the catch. That only comes with experience. Top of the second, Harold Baines. His 10th home of the year. Career hit number 2,500 for him. 74th player to reach that mark. Bottom two for Chili Davis. Way back, his 14th home of the year. Solo shot. Game tied at one. Top seven, 3-2 Chicago. Frank Thomas with two on. And for the second straight game, he drives in three runs. This time he did it on a one swing of the bat, three run home run, and Chicago wins it six to two. So the Royals have lost 10 in a row. Team record, the plate one on. And Grissom, third home run of the year. Indians up at this point by the score of two nothing. And Grissom's starting to turn it on. He started to play really well at the end of the second, first half there, and he's starting to swing the bat. Two one Indians, top four. Henry Ramirez scores the third of the wild pitch. Three one Indians. 4-1 Indians, bottom six, Jose Mesa on the mound. Two men on, Scott Stahoviak. Bring him up, sit him down. Next man up, Marty Cordova, down he goes. Still, well, look, look at the movement on Mason's ball. Uh, he's, he's got the, the nice explosion on the fastball now. Look at the, the cut on the sinker there. He's got it working once again after he's finally starting to get in shape, I think, Bill. Mesa pitched three scoreless innings. He struck out four as the Indians win at five. Homer of the year, he was three for four on the night in the series, the two games so far, he is five for nine. If the Astros want to contend, this guy has got to hit for them. Now, Mike Hampton against Mark Smith in the ninth. Down he goes. The Astros blank the Pirates for the second straight night. Last night, seven nothing. Tonight, 10 nothing. The Astros now lead Pittsburgh by one game in the NL Central. Bill.